about effect change in education, enrolling children in school, retaining them in school, giving them a good education, and making them not to turn back on education but to further their education. In, in seven years, we've only had two students that didn't further their education. All the other students are in Nigerian universities, in Ife, we have a collaboration, in Port Harcourt, they are all over the country. So, it is possible. And sports, the business, ah, people don't understand it. I've told you the connection between sports and illiteracy and uh, disease. And when we now went down, I was invited to uh, Harvard as one of resource persons for the business of sports in Africa. The business school, to come and talk about the business of sports in Africa. They thought I knew much about the business. Because, <laughs> because in Nigeria, when you are talking sports business, before you mention one or two people, they are, oh, they're me. Oh, he knows about it. I didn't know anything. <laughs> but the invitation to Harvard was an opportunity for me to go there so that I would add to my CV and, of course, <laughs> learn, learn from others. That's where I learned about the business of sports. The, the, you know, the business of sports. And I tell you, wow. That secret that Mandela discovered, I found it in the business of sports. And I'll tell you about it. That will be my final story. In 2003, I convinced the Minister for Sports in Nigeria that we should do an audacious thing. Now that I've discovered the power in sports to make change, I said, look, let us do what Mandela did. Say, what did Mandela do? I said, Mandela, in 10 years, since that day in 1995, the following year, they organized the Africa Cup of Nations. Then they organized the Cricket World Cup. Then they organized the Africa Cup of Nations. Then they organized the Football World Cup. They organized the Football World Cup. And now, they are planning to organize the first Olympic Games to come to Africa. I said, do you think they are crazy? They know what they are doing. Because with the power of sports, look, the World Cup is not a football event. The World Cup is not a football event. I took the minister to a convince the, the trip to Switzerland to go and see the former, the former president of FIFA. We got there and we sat before him. And he said, yeah, what do you want? The minister said, sure, go tell him. <laughs> because he just thought I was crazy. So I told Mr. Blatter, I said, look, look at the trend of things. Look at the way things are going in the world. You know, you are making this work of so expensive that only very few countries can organize it. It is not benefiting the countries that it should benefit. It is those countries that don't have money, that That's simple organized. work ups and benefit from it that should organize it. But now I'm coming up with a proposal. I said, what is it? I said, look, let us do a four or five nation regional work up in Africa. For when it is coming to Africa, don't burden one country. Let four or five share it. They will share the expenses. They will share the benefits. And people will have an unbelievable, unbelievable experience. The man said, wow, this is brilliant. If you put it forward, I am going to support it. That was his promise. We flew back, we went to the vice president, we told him, he bought into the idea. We went to the president himself, he approved it. He gave us letters. I took the letters personally to five African presidents. And they all agreed. We did a study on what needed to be done. However, it was shut down. It was shut down out of fear, out of ignorance, and out of the lack of belief in ourselves as Nigerians to do anything that has integrity, that has accountability, that has probity. We don't trust ourselves. And it is the damage that we have done. Sports, when you mention sports in government now, you say, that house of scandal, that house of corruption. That's why the national minister for planning to come out at the beginning of the tenure of this government, list 41 priority areas that the government would face, and sports was not one of them. And yet, this is the passion of the youth. 
This is an area that covers every aspect of life. If you have ever done the World Cup, you will know that sport is the least activity in the World Cup. It is about immigration. It is about tourism. It is about business. It is about medical facility. It is about road construction. It is about your rail lines. It is about, look, you have to put everything in place. And you have seven years to do it. And you must do it. It is compelling. Nigeria, we just talk. We procrastinate. We have great ideas. We don't do anything about them. If there is something that can make us do something, why don't we explore it? That was my whole idea in 2003. It was shut down for lack of belief, for Koja, because Koja was still in the minds of people. That reckless financial brigandage. My brothers, the formula is what Nelson Mandela did. Sport has the power to make changes. An opportunity beckons for unification, for infrastructural development, for regional integration, for so many things that our forefathers, our fathers, in fact, the founding fathers of this country, of Africa at independence time, their dream was that there should be a road from Johannesburg to Cairo. There should be a rail line from Dakar to Douala. There should be this, there should be that. Look, those things can find fulfillment. If after 57 years, they haven't been done, single currency, one huge market in West Africa, 250 million people, open boundaries, collaboration in security, in immigration, and all of those things. If one event can bring all of those things to be, why don't we explore that possibility? It is foolish, I know, it is foolish. It is simple. Oh, it cannot work. But you see, once again, our Lord uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. That opportunity comes in the year 2030 or the year 2034. I don't know who will be there and who will not be. I will not be part of those who will do it anyway. I'm too old to be that. But if we have faith in ourselves, and I know that there are young ones amongst us who can answer to what it takes to be a sportsman and to lead us because we need a new kind of leadership and we need new leaders in this country to lead us they will be accountable they will have probity they will have integrity their word will be their bond they will be determined like the super eagle players they will they will not never give up they will fly and swear like the eagles and they will restore peace into this country through the means of sports. The, 19, the 2030 World Cup beckons. The 2034 World Cup beckons. It will be the turn of Africa. Let us resurrect that idea because FIFA already has expanded the World Cup to 48 countries. They have agreed. Now they know that a single country hosting the World Cup may never work. They have agreed. People are thinking it. They are coming up with ideas of a multi-nation World Cup. We can have a West African World Cup made of four or five or six countries. And the dream of our fathers at independence will be achieved. The road from Johannesburg to Cairo will start to be constructed. The road from uh, Dakar to uh, Douala will start to be constructed. The millions of jobs that this will throw up will belong to our youths and so on and so forth. We shall take care of illiteracy. We shall do this. We shall do that. Sports has the power to change Nigeria.